It is very discouraging that you were laid off from United Health Group. But you can use this time with a little bit of planning to understand should you retire or do you need to go back to work? Putting a plan in place is going to be vitally important and there's going to be some key elements that we want to be talking about and discussing today. Diving into the details, the first thing you need to be considering is the nature of your layoff. Are you eligible for unemployment benefits or not? So there's going to be a number of different ways that you can be discerning this. First of all, you can be talking to HR more to determine if you're eligible for a severance package or something that's going to get you by. Now, if that's the case, then most likely you will not be claiming unemployment benefits and HR is going to walk you through this process because what they're going to be talking about is the fact that if you take the severance package or you take the amount of money they may be giving you uh, per your service well then that would be a substitute for your unemployment benefits so then you would not be eligible to be claiming that so that's the first thing to understand and if you are eligible for claiming unemployment do so as quickly as possible because we want to get this income started for you so that it's something that can be bridging a gap between where you're at today and maybe either potentially going back to work or figuring out if you want to retire. Now that's what the unemployment benefits would do, but if you received a uh, severance package, that would do the same thing. That would help bridge that gap. So there may be actual some benefits to that as well. So the first thing you need to do is be understanding where your benefits are and what you're eligible to receive. And if you have unemployment coming to you, make sure you start that process as soon as you can. Now, once we have that structured and set up, now is the time to just take a look at where all of your assets are. So do you have money to set aside in a 401k and retirement plans? Or do you have emergency money set aside in your savings accounts, your checking accounts, and maybe some money market accounts? You see, knowing where your money is, is actually gonna be vitally important and how you're gonna be able to claim money in this time of need. So if you do have bank accounts and emergency money set aside, that may actually be a good thing to use some of that right away. But on the flip side, maybe you actually have some stocks that you were actually looking to sell off. Maybe you have some low capital gains that you can sell off immediately. And this may be a great time to do it. See, all of that will come back down to how we can get through the next number of months while you're putting together the plans in place for what is next. And what that's going to do then is say, again, how can you just get by in this period of time allowing yourself the opportunity not only to grieve the loss of the job, but also to set yourself up correctly for what you want to do in the future and not have to be subject to going on the whim and starting to take money from all the different accounts without a plan. So taking inventory of where you're at is going to be very helpful as well and knowing where the cash is and knowing where to take the money from right now. So whether it's just some stocks and bonds that have very low capital gains or whether it's even the cash that you have set aside in savings accounts money market accounts things like that those would be very helpful right now next on the list would be to take an inventory of where your assets are and what i mean by this is if you're going to need to be pulling some money out of your accounts in order to just get by for the next few months until you have a plan in place well we need to know where those monies are so is it just in your 401k your retirement plans or do you have some emergency money set aside in your checking account your savings account maybe money market accounts that you have do you also have some stocks and bonds that may have some very well, low capital gains associated with them? Those are different aspects to be considering right now. And what you would like to do in this situation is just get by. So if we take a little bit out of the emergency savings, maybe take a little bit out of the stocks and bonds that have very low capital gains, so there's not really a taxation to it. What that's going to allow you to do then is put the plan in place as to where money is going to be coming from, not only today and tomorrow, but even if you decide to fully retire. Hey, this is Nathan Crampy, and I create these videos because you are likely very ambitious when it comes to your overall wealth plan. Now, I'm very sad to hear about your layoff. And with that, I know that that's going to 
potentially change your retirement. So when we talk about your probability of success, there's a lot of different ways that we can be looking at how to increase that, how to work with your wealth correctly. And that's what this channel is about. Do me a favor, like this video and subscribe to this channel so that you can be kept up to date on new information that's coming out and how you can best prepare for retirement. Well then, speaking of a plan, now is the time to review your overall wealth plan because right now you can really start to look at should you retire or not? And it really comes back down to the numbers. So while we have been claiming unemployment or while we have the severance package, you have a little bit of income coming in that gives you some breathing room. And if we have a little bit of money taken care of from your just basic needs from say your checking account and savings account, well now we can start putting and finalizing the plan should you actually retire or should you go back either working full time or even part time for the next couple of years possibly to bridge the gaps until you decide you're ready to retire fully. So what we want to do here, when we take a look at your overall wealth plan, I would definitely suggest starting with should you retire now or not? So what this would look like then is putting a plan in place to say, all right, if I retired now, how much do I need for basic living expenses? Now, those are going to be a category in and of themselves. So whether it's just a mortgage uh, plus utilities, whether you add in food, uh, anything related to cell phone bills, car payments, things like that, those are going to be in your basic necessity and utility kind of uh, uh, way for your expenses. Now, we can also be looking at the category for what you want for income as well. Now, this would be more for, say, the, the fun things that you want to do, whether it's travel, uh, whether you want to be purchasing some new toys, little things like that. Well, that's what we can be setting aside for what we want our income to do. Now, there's two different categories. So when we take a look at our basic necessities, we want to see if that can be covered through social security and pension and some other guaranteed income streams that we have with that. Now, if that's the case, then most likely we're going to be talking about some very different scenarios for you as part of your overall planning for how you are going to go about retiring well. If you don't have enough guaranteed income that's going to be covering those basic living expenses, now that's a whole another set of planning that you're going to need to go down. But like I said, the first element is to start with understanding if you can retire today or not. So put a plan in place to say, not only do we have our expenses, but we have our known income streams. And those would be, in this case, the guaranteed income streams. And then we can start to branch out a little bit more and start to say, all right, well, here's what t things will look like if I never went back to work. But now we can start putting different plans in place as well to say, well, what if I worked a couple more years, full time maybe? Or what if I worked just part time because I want to? Well, all of that's going to mean something different to your social security benefits, to your overall amount of savings, and to the just the earnings that you have coming in the door that's going to help to put money away for retirement in the future. Now, all of that is exactly what we want to do, but if it's not needed, if you have the ability to retire now, that's going to really come back to say, now we can start putting the plan in place to look at your income streams and tra transitioning your assets into income. So having that plan is going to be vitally important. And that's one of the key elements to this time period and making sure that we have the money just to get us by while we're planning is going to be helpful here as well. And speaking of income sources, let's take a moment to talk about your pension and your social security, because those are going to be big elements when it comes to the guaranteed income streams that you have in retirement. Well, let's start with the pension, because since this will be a guaranteed income stream that you have coming to you, and if you don't have a pension, obviously this section is going to be something that you don't need to plan for. But if you do have a pension, we want to be taking a look at how you should be claiming that pension. Well, first off, as the nature of your layoff, is the pension fully vested? Did they add some credits onto your pension so that you could be bridging the gap between when you would have been taking it, let's say age 65, and when you're taking it now or able to claim it earlier? So that's something to understand. If they gave you an extra little kicker onto your pension and increase that amount to show you what it would be like at age 65, but able to take it earlier, that may be very helpful to start claiming now. 
Well, the other elements to note then is your spouse. Does your spouse need to have some of this income as well? And what I mean by this is if something in, happened to you, is this income going to need to help protect your spouse and his or her income as well? So that's also something to be understanding because the pension is such that you could actually claim it as a single life, meaning it's going for your life only. And if something happens to you, then it goes away. But you could also claim it for a joint life between you and your spouse. And if that's the case, depending on how you take it, the money will be there for you. And also there will be some money set aside for your spouse in the event of your passing. Now this will be guaranteed depending on how you take it. You do have what's called period certains, which go for a period of time, or you have a lifetime benefit as well. But this all comes back down to the planning because we don't want to have your spouse being in the dark if something ever happened to you just because we took a single life pension. So I definitely say look into the pension and really take stock of not only it should it be for your life, but should you have it for your spouse's life? And did you get an extra benefit as part of your overall layoff? So that's going to be some of the planning that we need to go to and go through for your pension. But we can do the same thing for your social security because really speaking, it may be that taking it now, say earlier, whether it's age 62, 63, 64, that may or may not be that helpful for you. And what I mean by this is we have a couple of different elements we want to do with social security. We want to maximize how much you're receiving in benefits, but we also want to minimize how much you're taking and claiming from your overall wealth plan and, and all the assets that you have accumulated through the years. Well, that comes back down to health history, uh, your medical, uh, your medical records, your longevity, so let's say in the family, uh, your spouse as well, their age, do you have, minor children in the house, all of that's going to be taken into account here. And again, we want to know where your break even points are, because if your break even point, and I'm just throwing out a number here, if your break even point is age 75, what that means is before age 75, it would actually be better for you to have claimed your benefits earlier. So let's say at age 62, because then what we'll do is it'll give you more benefits up until the age 75. Now, if you pass away before that, then you have claimed more in benefits from Social Security than if you had waited. However, let's say, again, using that 75 as our number, if you made it past your 75th birthday, then it would be such a waiting to claim your benefits, let's say to your full retirement age, or even up to age 70, would have actually been better off because you will claim more in benefits every day past your 75th anniversary, uh, 75th birthday than if you had claimed them earlier. So that is really something to know. And this can mean hundreds of thousands of dollars of difference between you and your spouse over your retirement period. So this is not something to take lightly. I would definitely say do the work here. So as part of your overall planning, do the work to understand when you should be taking your social security. Should you claim early or should you postpone it and claim later? Now that's all going to come back down to, again, how your retirement's going to look. So this is all something that you're going to need to be doing most likely in the first couple months of your layoff. So just understand that. And if you need help, obviously we will be here for you to provide some assistance with some of the social security calculations for you and the pension and some of the other aspects. So give us an email info at lionswealth.com and we'd be very happy to run the calculations for you without any charge. All right, now that you have your plan in place and really the understanding if you should retire or not, now we can start looking at the other elements too. So we've already talked about the pension and social security. Well, another key element in this period of time before Medicare age is understanding your health benefits. Now, as part of your layoff, did you receive part of, let's say, a retiree medical package or something that would bridge the gap between where you're at today and getting you up to Medicare? Well, that's going to also be something to know because if you have those benefits coming to you, that's going to help pay for whether it's COBRA or whether it is part of your original plan that you're on and continuing that 
for a number of years is also going to be vitally helpful because this may be a great plan that you want to keep and stay on and having the ability to do that is something that you need to be aware of. So again, this is where HR comes in because they can talk about how these benefits work if you're eligible to keep on the plan, if you have to pay anything for the plan. You see, that may be something that is part of your layoff package. Maybe you receive the severance in the form of helping with your medical costs. Well, that may be a great thing to, again, bridge those gaps between now and Medicare. But let's say you don't have a package deal that includes health insurance and we're now needing to go on to the open market. Well, first know that COBRA is a good alternative, at least to help with this period of time. So if we need to continue having health insurance while we're trying to find new insurance, COBRA will be there for you. Now, this is again something that you need to sign up for right away because what this is going to do is provide from the day that you were laid off up to well, today and for the next 18 months. Now, this is something that is going to be costly because you're going to be paying for the entirety of that plan every single month out of pocket. So it may not be something that we want to keep with for a long extended period of time, but this will then again allow you to talk to people. And by nature, uh, brokers are the correct ones to talk to here because they can work with many different plans in your state and really start to come back down to the details of what's important to you, what are your needs for your health care, and then they can start pinpointing the very specific type of insurance that's going to be right for you. And this can also include your drug coverage as well. So if you are young and under the age of Medicare, so 65, then we're going to be talking about just a regular health insurance policy. Now, if you're 65 and older, well, now we're going to be switching gears and we're really going to be starting to talk about what's going to be more pertinent for you with respect to Medicare. And your, your things are a little more limited on how we're going to be talking about that, but a broker can really help you, especially with Part C and looking at what the benefits are going to be and how they're going to be helpful for you going forward. So again, take this time. If you need to, I would definitely suggest that getting on COBRA right away would be helpful while we're bridging the gap and while you're going to be finding a broker to talk to, to look at all of your health insurance. And the nice thing is that they are going to get paid from the insurance companies. So you do not have to pay for them out of pocket. And that's going to be very helpful because now we can really start to say that they have your interest at heart. And no matter which one we go into of the policies, they know that you are going to be taken care of and that you have the best possible health insurance for what you're looking for. Well, let's continue on and look at more of the wealth that you have as part of work because you may be having things outside of your 401k. So what I'm talking about here would be your stock options that you have available. Do you have restricted stock units that are there as well? Or do you have bonuses that are going to be paid out? Do you have, a, a, again, that severance package that you may be receiving? See, all of those are going to be income streams that are going to be coming in. And it may be such, especially with some of the stock options, that they accelerate your vesting schedule. So some of them may be vesting this year. And if it's uh, restricted stock units, they may all be vesting this year. If it's your stock options, maybe you have the ability to exercise them all this year. Well, that's something that you should obviously consult with uh, individuals that can really help you, especially your accountant to understand, is this something that you should be doing tax wise? But you may not have an option, especially with some that are going to be paid out no matter what. Well, that's going to be additional income that is going to be coming in. So if that's the case, then we can be counting on that for some of the payments that you're going to be needing just to get you through this period of time. So we may not need to take from your other retirement accounts to bridge that gap because you may have some more money coming in the door here in the next month or two. Well, understanding that again is going to be important in this time. So take stock of all of those additional programs and benefits that you have, especially your stock options to see if that's going to be something that is going to be paid out or if you even lose them. You see, that may be something that instead of having them vest, 
maybe you lose some of those options. And that's not a great thing, but just understanding where you're at will allow you again to come back to your plan and make sure that you're going to have the income coming in the door here for the next number of months while you're putting the plan in place for the income for the future. Last element when it comes to your income, we want to talk about annuities. Now, why I want to talk about annuities here is because of the fact that going back to, say, the pension and Social Security, those are guaranteed streams of income. That's a paycheck for life is what those things are. But if your basic living expenses with the mortgage, with your utilities, with food, with the car payments, with all of those things, if that's not taken up by just pensions and Social Security, if you still have extras that need to happen there, the math and the science really dictate that you need to have other streams of lifetime guaranteed income. Now that's in a form of a payout that's going to be there no matter what. And that will actually help increase the probability of success in retirement that you will never run out of money. It'll help increase your rate of return that you're going to be receiving and also help lower your risk. Now, if again, that pensions and social security don't cover all that, then the math actually suggests that we go out to get an annuity. And I know when we start talking about the A word, that really starts to conjure up some maybe different thoughts that are there. But here's the thing. Not all annuities are create equal. There are going to be some very good ones to go through here and maybe ones that are going to be vitally important for you. And why I talk about this is because we want to have enough income coming in from all different sources. So there's three of them again, the pension, social security, and then if we need to go out and get a separate annuity, having those cover your basic living expenses. And once we have that taken care of, then we can start talking about the best ways to handle the rest of your assets. And speaking about the other elements of your wealth, this is where we can actually be putting aside the money for growth for the future, but also having the ability to use a little bit of that today. So this is where stocks come in. This is where bonds come in. This is where the mutual funds and the managed money and real estate and all the different areas that you're used to for diversification. So again, once we have all of those guaranteed lifetime incomes taken care of for the expenses that you have, now we can be looking at how to grow the money, how to keep up with inflation with it, how to have the best return with the least amount of risk. Well, that's definitely something that you should be looking at many different areas. Now, first thing you can do is know that you can keep it as part of your 401k at your old company. Well, maybe that's going to be vitally important to you and maybe that's going to be vitally helpful for you. You see, a lot of times they have low fees attached to them. They have some great investment ideas for you to be invested into, and that may be very helpful. Now, with that, we also want to be understanding that there's ways you can take money out of these accounts that you may not be able to as part of your IRA account. So just know where you want to be holding the money as well and what your needs and uses for it are. Now, if it comes back down to just the investment side of things, there may be other and better ways to be invested than just your 401k. And again, this comes back down to what is in the investments in your 401k and how helpful they're going to be for the future. Now, if you need other elements, so whether we need to add in some real estate that's not part of your 401k, whether we need to add in some ways to have some income coming in the door that may not be part of a mutual fund, well, those are some things that we can start saying, well, maybe we need to be transferring the account to an IRA account. This is something that you manage. This is something that we can be going into many different elements of investments. And if we do this correctly, you may actually come out better and ahead. But it really comes back down to knowing and understanding should you keep it as part of your 401k, because there may be some really good ways that we have low fees and the ability to withdraw money out of there in a way that you may not be able to as part of the IRA account. So those are all elements to consider at this point in time as well. And again, it comes back down to the planning. So what we talked about earlier, if you have a little bit of money from the emergency funds that are going to help get you by in this period of time, that allows you and affords you the opportunities to spend a little more time to working on should you keep it as part of your 401k or should you be working to transition it to another account. 
Well, ultimately, your success of your retirement is going to come back down to the planning that you do today. And what I always talk about here is how can we have the highest probability of success today? And if we look at the future in the different scenario planning that we can be doing, what's the best way then for you to have the highest probability of success today? But are there ways that we can start increasing your probability of success? You see, the higher the probability of success, the more likely you are that no matter what, you're going to have the money set aside for today, tomorrow, and in the future, and possibly even leaving a legacy. Now, again, this is a probability. So there always are things that are going to happen, whether we go through a very horrific next number of years, the first years of your retirement, well, things are going to look a lot different than if we have great growth that's happening with your accounts in those first number of years. That's called the sequence of return risk. But there's going to be other elements of the risk that we need to take off the table, and namely longevity. So how we plan for longevity in this period of time is going to come back down to your probability of success. But what we can look at here is different scenarios that we can be taking a look at, and again, understanding of where you're at today and where you want to go in the future. And then we help to bridge those gaps with what I call advanced planning. Now this takes into account wealth enhancement, so how do we grow the money and have tax mitigation a part of it here? So how can we keep taxes as low as possible? We go through again, wealth transfer. So making sure your money's going to the intended people at the intended time with the least amount of tax impact. Then we go down to charitable giving. Well, that's going to be making sure that if it's important to you, that we have money set aside for charity. And then the last element is wealth protection. Making sure your money's not unjustly taken. Well, if we wrap all of those together into some of the advanced planning, we have the income streams, we have the probability of success that your money is going to be there for you when you need it to be, and we have the advanced planning to say that those other elements are taken care of as part of your gaps that we're starting to close. That ultimately is going to show how well of a retirement you can have and how likely it is that you're going to be able to leave a legacy. Now, with that, I've said it before, but as you would like help with this, click the link below because I would be more than willing to meet with you, talk through this, whether it's virtually as part of a Zoom meeting or whether it's a one-on-one -on -one in person meeting. We can talk through, put together that probability of success and really work through should you stay retired or should you be looking for another, uh, maybe even one to two years worth of work during this period of time. But I know it's hard, I know that uh, layoffs are never fun, but I also know that this could be a very good thing for you with just a little planning. Because you've made it this far, I want to celebrate you. See, I know this is a very hard time for you as part of the layoff, and what I want to offer you is a special one-on-one -on -one consultation to talk through what the layoff means, to talk through if you have the ability to retire and what the future will look like given some of the probability of success that we're going through and the wealth that you have. So with that, click the link below and we'll set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation where we'll be going through the details of your layoff and if you are able to retire. Now this is going to be a special one-on-one -on -one consultation that is complimentary just for watching this video. So again, click the link below and I look forward to seeing you soon. For more tips and tricks on how you can be looking to improve your overall wealth plan, click this video right here.